Finding a proof for an argument can be difficult. So we are now going to look at a few strategies that can help you to develop a proof. My favorite strategy is backward planning, and that's what we are going to start with. Logic really is a goal-oriented activity. Whenever you think about developing a proof, you should keep your eyes on the price and let your actions be guided by what you are aiming at or by where you are going to. And that's the key idea behind backward planning. So what does that mean in practice? Backward planning suggests two main steps. Look at the sentence that you want to prove and identify the main connective of that sentence. Then use the introduction rule for this connective to get to where you want to go, meaning to establish the sentence that you want to prove. So for example, if you want to prove a conjunction, backward planning suggests to use conjunction introduction to infer this conjunction. So what does that look like in practice? Suppose we have a proof and we want to establish a conjunction, say A and B. Now, backward planning suggests identify the main connective of the sentence, that's a conjunction, and then use the corresponding introduction rule to justify your sentence. So in this case, that would be conjunction introduction. And now I know that to apply conjunction introduction, I need to first prove both conjuncts separately. So I'm going to go ahead and write A in one line of my proof and B in another line. And so what I'm telling myself here basically is that if I manage to prove B and I also manage to prove A, then I can infer A and B and justify that inference by citing conjunction introduction as applied to two lines. I don't know which ones, so I'm gonna put two question marks here. And I'm also going to put a question mark behind A and a question mark behind B to remind myself that I still need to prove these two lines. But that is the basic proof setup suggested when I use backward planning as my proof strategy. Now, backward planning suggests different proceedings depending on what you want to prove. So suppose what you want to prove is not a conjunction, but a conditional of the form if A then B. In that case, backward planning suggests to use conditional introduction to prove the sentence. And I know that um, in order to apply conditional introduction, I need a subproof. So I need to set up a subproof that starts with the assumption that A and leads to the conclusion that B. And if indeed I manage to prove B, then I can infer that if A then B and justify that inference by citing conditional introduction as applied to the subproof from line question mark to question mark. And I'm also going to put a question mark behind B just to remind myself that I still need to establish B. I have not in fact yet proven the sentence yet. So this is the basic proof setup that's suggested when I use backward planning and the sentence that I want to prove is a conditional. Now, what does backward planning suggest when I prove a negated sentence? Well, suppose this is my proof and I want to prove that not A. Backward planning suggests that I should use negation introduction to prove the sentence. And I know that negation introduction also requires a subproof. So that subproof starts with the assumption that A and ends with a contradiction. And if indeed I manage to construct such a subproof, then I can justify the inference to not A by citing negation introduction and the subproof from line question mark to line question mark. 
And I'm also gonna put a question mark behind the bottom sign since I have not yet established bottom. So this is the basic proof setup. If I use backward planning as my proof strategy and what I want to prove is a negated sentence. Now, what if what I want to prove is a disjunction? Well, this would be our basic proof setup. What we want to show here is the disjunction that A or B, and backward planning suggests that I use disjunction introduction to infer this disjunction. And um, in order to apply disjunction introduction, I need to establish one of the two disjuncts, either A or B. And if I'm able to do that, then I can infer the disjunction and justify that inference by using disjunction introduction as applied to line question mark. And I'm also gonna put a question mark behind A to remind myself that, that I have not yet proven this sentence. So this sentence is, so to speak, on my wish list. I have not yet established that indeed it follows from my premises. Now, what if what I want to prove is bottom? Well, if what I want to prove is bottom, then backward planning suggests that I should use bottom introduction in order to infer bottom. Alternatively, of course, I could use negation elimination since these two rules are identical. And so that means that I need to establish a sentence A and the negation of that sentence at, at some point earlier in my proof. Since one I, once I have established both A and not A, I can infer bottom by citing either bottom introduction or negation elimination. And I'm going to put question marks behind both A and not A to remind myself that I still have to prove these two sentences and also put question marks here to remind myself that I need to supply line references and tell my reader to which lines in my proof I apply the sentence. So I here used a very simple example um, and I suggested, well, I could prove the contradiction or I could prove both A and not A and then use bottom introduction to infer bottom. Of course, I could also prove a much more complicated sentence and then infer bottom. So I could prove, say, if A then B, and it's not the case that if A then B, and then infer bottom. So you have a, a wide variety of choices with regard to which two sentences you prove in order to be able to infer bottom. And often it depends on the specific context of your proof, which sentences um, suggest themselves for this purpose. So often you need to look at your specific proof to think about which sentence and its negation you want to prove to be able to, to apply bottom introduction.